forward to the class. And we are recording. So share screen off, right? Share screen off. Um, mute on entry. Oh, yeah, that's what I do. Okay. Show name when people join. You want that? Yeah. We can turn it off. I mean. Yeah, maybe. Oh, that's gonna show it to the whole group. Maybe. You want that? I don't know. <laughs> so I think that's what Tracy did the other day, and it makes the screen go just black constantly. Name pops up. Yeah. So how many people are in the waiting right now? Uh, Twenty-two. Yeah. So as soon as they get in, I'll just hit meet all, and we should be good. No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. We're recording. Okay. It might help. I'm not sure. To the people? Yeah, I think so. Can you can you do that or is it just right when it hits four? It's I think it switches over. Yeah. That doesn't I don't see anything here that says I can just open it. Oh it says admit admit all. Maybe okay. So whenever you're ready I'll I'll hit that button I guess. Yeah, Ready? Good. Mm-hmm. Hello. Can you uh, put that screen to the, on the iPad to see if the square one? There we go. There we go, some people. Hello. 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 So we're gonna give everybody a couple minutes just to pop in, and then uh, we'll have uh, we'll have everybody muted at first, and then uh, if you want to talk, there's a button in the uh, left hand side of your screen that'll allow you to, to talk in. Hi, Delaney. So yeah, thanks for doing this. Um, it's our first time for uh, for Tommy and I, but we are practicing social distancing. I even have my tape measure. Tommy's right over here. There we go, look at that, six feet away, exactly. So, so Tommy's gonna be doing the filming. Um, if you have questions, you can unmute yourself and then ask a question. Um, but right now, well, everybody's uh, starting to pop in. We'll give it a couple minutes and uh, I'm gonna pour myself a glass of wine. I suggest y'all do the same. I'm gonna open up some Fulton Chardonnay here. Oh, there we go, I see some bottles, I like it. 
There we go. So we blast this. Right on. Show them what you got. Let's go see. So I'm drinking the 2018 Fulton Ranch Chardonnay. It's from right here on the property. We're in uh, just north of Santa Rosa and Fulton at the Kendall Jackson and Wine Center. If y'all have been here, you've seen this vineyard. Um, we produce about 550 cases of this wine. It, it is six different clones of Chardonnay and it sees almost 100% new oak. So it's a nice rich Chardonnay. Um, so it should pair well with uh, the tortilla espanol we're going to be cooking today. <laughs> so we'll give it just another minute, but um, just before we started, Chef Tommy actually made this tortilla. This was his first attempt and it came out perfect. Um, so this is what we're hoping you all end up with at the end of the day today. So has anybody had this dish before? If, if you've been to Spain, you probably had it in a tapas restaurant. Um, but it's basically like a frittata, like a potato and egg frittata. And it's really simple, not a whole lot of ingredients. Um, we're gonna use about just under two pounds of potatoes, one onion, and eight eggs, eight full eggs. And then if we have time today and you wanna make the aioli, I know it wasn't on your ingredients list, but if you got a couple of garlic cloves, a blender, a lemon, and some more olive oil, maybe a little Dijon mustard, we can make an aioli for that as well. I'll show you how to do that. But if you don't have that or you don't wanna take the time to make it, uh, a lot of times what we'll do is just take some pre-made mayonnaise and mix a little sriracha into it, make a sriracha aioli. That's probably my wife's favorite thing to put on it. Um, if not, you know, chipotle aioli, whatever you like. A lot of times uh, people enjoy Romanesco sauce um, on the tortilla as well. So looks like people are starting to filter in here. Um, so as far as equipment we're gonna to need today, a nice pan. We want it to be probably a nine to 10 inch pan. Um, I would say non-stick is the easiest. So this is a nice non-stick pan. If it's got high sides, it's even better. If it's got a little curve too, it's really nice. Uh, you could also use a carbon pan or a cast iron pan. But if you have the nonstick, I'd go with it. If you if you have a big, a smaller pan, like nine inch, um, eight inch, you could cut back if you have an eight inch pan a little bit on the potatoes and onions, because it might over overfill your pan. But this is uh, ten inch here, so nine to ten inch with high sides is ideal. If you have a gas burner, you can cook it on. Um, gas is going to be better. Is what's going to happen is a flame is going to come up around the side of the pan. And it's going to help crisp the um, potatoes and eggs. It's going to help brown it around the outside, if you can see all that there. Does anybody have any questions before we get started? Or So you remember, you're all on mute, but on the left-hand side of your screen, um, there's a button you can push to that. Thank you for doing this. This is wonderful. We hope this continues. We really enjoyed Tracy and we're looking forward to today. Cool. Well, thank you. We're looking forward to it as well. And uh, you know, if it goes well today or if there's something you want to see, send Diane Bono an email and uh, we can add more of these. Um, we definitely have the time these days. And uh, you know, if there's something you want to learn to cook, we can probably how to make it and figure a wine that goes well with it. Um, what else do we need to do? So uh, if, if you want to see me as the main screen, it'll make it a little bigger. If you just double tap on me for the main screen, um, that'll, that'll show you 
a little bit bigger picture of me and less of the other screens. And then if you want to turn this into a drinking game, every time I say so or um, you can have a glass or have a sip of wine. So just don't drive after that because there's going to be a lot of ums and a lot of says. Um, what else do we need to talk about here? So we figured out how to click on your screen and talk, and then uh, happy Earth Day as well. So my daughter, I can see her up there. She got an Earth Day shirt on in the, in the video there. And then uh, Tommy, come around. This is Chef Tommy. He's going to say hi. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'll be filming today. From six feet away. Um, so unless anybody's got some other questions, we'll go ahead and get started. So uh, we're going to cook a little, you're all, or hopefully going to cook along with me. So we're going to start first with our onion, and we're going to take the top off, bottom off, slice it in half, and then just peel the skin back. Can we, can you guys, are you guys going to video record this? Because it sounds like you're going to say so, so many times, I'm going to be drunk and pass out. Tom keeps asking if we're going to record it because he's going to be drunk by the end of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're going to record it and, uh, and I think uh, they'll post it for the wine club later on. So we got the uh, onion peeled and cut in half and peeled. And then we're just going to take the, uh, the core end out. And then we're going to julienne it. And we want it to be probably about a quarter inch thick. One thing you want to do whenever you're cutting, you want to think of the claw, okay? So my knife is up on my second knuckle. My fingers are out, not out in front. I keep my thumb back. So put the onion on a flat surface. Use the claw and slice it back. Nothing really has to be perfect for this dish. Um, just the way it cooks, it doesn't matter if, uh, if they're not perfectly the same, but they will cook more evenly if they're similar size. So we got that, and then I'm going to pop it in a bowl. It's a good idea to use a bench scraper instead of your knife to scrape the cutting board. This is going to help keep your knife sharper. So we'll pop that in there. Let's see, I don't know if you can see that, but probably about a quarter inch. Okay. All right, so we got the onions. Now we're going to... Um, See, that was a so, and um, that's two sips if you're playing along. Now we're gonna peel some potatoes. So I have three washed potatoes here. This is the russet potato, or the um, Idaho russet is called, or it's often called the Burbank potato. And that's because it was invented by a gentleman, I guess crossbred is probably the right word. Um, by a gentleman made, named Luther Burbank here in Santa Rosa. And so he crossbred potatoes and came up with this russet variety, that, the, the Burbank potato. And it's probably now the most eaten vegetable in the country thanks to French fries. So if you're ever out here in Santa Rosa, you can visit his house um, and his gardens, and it's absolutely beautiful. It's got all kinds of amazing flowers. He, he also bred a lot of roses and blackberries and cactus and all kinds of cool stuff. So if you need something to read about, look up Luther Burbank. Pretty interesting dude. All right, so I got my Y peeler. This is a pretty nice peeler. They cost maybe two to four bucks, something like that. Um, but they're nice, easy, pretty fast. It's really nice for like carrots and uh, zucchini, cucumbers, long vegetables. We're just going to peel these potatoes. How many people are kicking along at home? Raise your hand if you're kicking along. All right, we got a couple there. Cool, all right. So I guess everybody's all around the country, but I will tell you today in Santa Rosa, it's absolutely beautiful. Uh, it's probably about, must be close to 80 degrees out there. I actually just went out to the garden 
and fed the bees. We got some new hives of bees um, about a week ago. And then Tucker and I actually uh, captured a swarm of bees the other day. Um, so we, so we bought three in. hives and then we captured one swarm. And so I went out and I've been feeding them simple syrup every two days for the last week until they start to build up their, their cones. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. But the garden's absolutely stunning right now. The, the, the team in the garden's had a lot of time to focus on um, doing some landscaping and planting some summer crops now. So, so we're in Michigan and it's uh, freezing here and uh, we're supposed to get uh, snow. Oh no. Well, this will be good, good dish. You might want to eat this warm then um, tonight. A lot of times I actually enjoy it as a leftover dish the next day. You can leave it out or pop it in the fridge and eat it the next day. But in Spain, a lot of people like to eat it while it's still warm and almost a little bit runny on the inside. All right, so I got my uh, potatoes here. And then we are just going to Cut those similar to the onions. So we're going to get cut them in half to get a flat surface. If this was going to take you a little while, you could put them into water at this point to kind of keep them from oxidizing. So just again, using that claw. If you had a mandolin, you could also use the mandolin it, uh, for this as well. That would make it super easy, super fast. But again, always try and put it to that flat surface. So it's easier to cut things when they're not rolling around. You know, obviously a sharp knife always helps too. If you have a steel, make sure you're using your steel occasionally. And again, they don't have to be perfect because basically after we slice these, they're just going to kind of almost, it's almost in between frying and simmering uh, that you cook the potatoes. And we're going to put a lid on it so it kind of helps them cook when, they, when they're in the oil. And I will tell you this recipe calls for a lot of olive oil. Um, but that's a good thing. That's what gives it its rich texture. And you might have a little bit left over at the end. But it takes a lot because you really have to get the potatoes almost coated, almost like you're going to so Justin, how many potatoes do we need? So this uh, depends on the size. Okay. Two pounds, probably three. Okay. Mine were probably medium size. If you had okay. two really large potatoes, that would work. Okay. Or if we have three mediums, should be good. But, okay. Uh, yeah, just about two pounds. It's probably about. I don't know, maybe four cups of sliced potatoes, three, four cups. Okay. And then you said cut it in half and then just thin slices. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, cut it in half and then okay. thin slices. Okay. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's probably okay, got, yeah. quite about a quarter of an inch. Thanks. And I've got the uh, Alisos Hills Viognier and I've got the Santa Maria Valley Chardonnay. Which one do you think is the better call here? I would probably do Chardonnay. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Cool. Okay. Thanks. But either would be good. All right, so I'm going to toss this in the bowl with my onions. And then I'm going to sprinkle probably about a tablespoon of salt in there. We're just going to toss those around to get that seasoning on the potatoes. Because this dish, you kind of have to season it as you're going in ahead. It's not a dish that you can get salt into at the end. You can put salt on top. But it's really better if you get the seasoning into here and into the eggs. So that's why we're doing this here. And then 
It's going to sound like a crazy amount of audible. I'm actually going to go ahead and turn my pan on right now over like medium heat just so it starts preheating. And I'm going to add probably about a cup of oil to here. It sounds like a crazy amount, um, but it is. So. That is what gives it this rich texture. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going to toss the pan in so they're evenly coated. And what that's going to do, it's going to keep them from sticking. Mm -hmm. Kind of like when you put your pasta in and you stir yeah. it first thing yeah, when it's in the water, uh, keeps the pasta from sticking. This is going to keep the starch on the potatoes from sticking to each other. He didn't say Sometimes you'll have a couple of potatoes stick and then they won't cook evenly. Oh. Coat it. Here's sure. Like give everybody a sec if you're kicking along. Hopefully you're catching up. So in Spain, they probably drink this with a dry sherry. Um, you know, my wife and I got to go to Spain uh, probably I don't know, seven years ago, six, seven years ago. And uh, when you go to the tapas restaurants, a lot of times they'll cut this tortilla into little squares and have it on a toothpick and you'll get it with a little aioli or a mesco and it's just a bite sized thing. But you know, tonight you could cut off a nice little wedge and serve it with a salad. Um, you know, if you happen to have caviar and creme fraiche, that's always a fun one to garnish it with. If you have that laying at your house, uh, laying around your house right now, then uh, just text me your address because I'd love to come by and eat some caviar. Um, but it's a super simple dish, but it's kind of a, a, a blank palette, basically. You can, you can go a lot of different directions with what you garnish it with. You can also maybe cook some chorizo down or something to flavor the oil as well. But traditionally, a lot of times they don't even put onions in it. I like the onions, it adds a little bit of sweetness, but it's mostly just about the potatoes and the eggs. So let's see here. I got my pan nice and hot. What I'm gonna do next is just drain some of that oil out of here. See, Justin, how much olive oil was it you said? Half a cup or a cup? Did you say it was olive oil? It was half about a cup, a cup or a cup? cup? You may have some left over, but about a cup of olive oil. You can hear that sizzling. You can see it's piled up a little bit over the top, but that's going to cook down. So I'm going to put it on the heat. Let's give it a little shake around. And then I'm going to have a spatula in one hand to give it a little stir later. And if you're using a non-stick pan or a cast iron pan, you probably want wood or a rubber spatula. You don't want to use metal. In the original email below the join the meeting, there's a recipe. There's a recipe. What's that? She's the same as the recipe. Yeah, I said there's, there's a, a recipe, recipe below the join the meeting that tells you all the steps. Just FYI, in case you didn't see it. And uh, you know this fish. It, you can cook it off a recipe, but honestly, it's it's a tricky one to just follow a recipe. Um, it's one of these dishes, it's like making biscuits or something like that. You kind of have to do it a couple times to really get the feel for it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take a lid and just give her that a cover. And then I'm going to show you how to make an aioli. But remember again, if you had um, mayonnaise at home, you can just mix some mayonnaise with some garlic and lemon. But aioli is actually pretty easy to make. It's basically just uh, an emulsification of um, water and oil, pretty much. So I have uh, two cloves of garlic here. So we're going to put these in our blender. You could use, uh, you could do it in a mortar and pestle. That's the, the traditional way, but we have technology, so do a nice blender here. Um, then I'm going to do a couple of egg yolks in here. Okay. 
I don't know if y'all can hear that, but you can hear the, the potatoes starting to cook over here. And it's really bubbling. You can steam in and I can start to smell it. So when you're cooking and you're using all your spider senses, you're using sight and sound and you're also listening to the food cook. And I could, I could tell by the smells in the kitchen right now that I was starting to get a little bit of color on those onions, which is good. You're, it, I actually like to get a little golden brown, but we don't want to like burn them. We don't want them to get caramelized. So we're going to give this a quick stir. And this is also going to help to cook the potatoes evenly. And we're going to pop that back on the heat. This is probably going to cook for about 20 minutes uh, right now. So if you have any questions, happy to answer those. Would you say 20 minutes, Justin? Sorry. The potatoes are probably going to take about 20 minutes to cook. I'm going to do three, three egg yolks. You can probably do less, um, but sometimes to get the blender moving, this size restaurant blender, you got to have a little more in there. And I'm going to turn my heat down just a little bit to medium. The big end, I can hear it really cooking over there. Okay, so we'll give it a little, little pinch of salt in here as well. And then uh, just a touch of water, a couple of tablespoons. And then I have some uh, Dijon mustard as well. You don't have to add the mustard, but I like the spice it adds to it. So pop that in there. Give it a little blend here. So basically what uh, mayonnaise is or what uh, aioli is, it's a emulsification of fat, which is our olive oil, and water. And we're using the eggs, which have less of them, to bind it together to stick it. Um, but one thing that's important is that when you're making it, you add the oil in a nice slow drizzle to help start that emulsification. Because otherwise, it breaks and then it'll separate. But so garlic helps it to emulsify, as does the John mustard. So I just gave this a little stir. I'm going to turn this back on. And I'm gonna slowly add olive oil in. How much Dijon, Dijon mustard? What's that? How much mustard? I put like a, maybe a teaspoon of mustard in there. And I got three egg yolks, uh, salt, a little bit of water, and then we'll probably add some lemon juice later on. So I'm gonna turn the blender on, and I'm gonna start to add the oil in. I don't know if you can see that, but I'm just giving a nice slow drizzle there. Justin, can you do this with a immersion blender instead? Yeah, you can use an immersion blender too. Okay. So how much olive oil are you gonna end up adding? Olive oil, how much? Olive oil, uh, maybe four to six ounces. We'll see how long it takes to thicken. I think mean, it depends on how many eggs you have. And what are you looking for to determine when you stop adding the olive oil? What are you looking for, like consistency? Uh, like mayonnaise that's different.
Hey, Justin, will a, will a thinner pan make the potatoes burn faster? Yeah, just that the pan is thin or burn quicker. Oh no. And hey, just a quick question: the eggs is for the tortilla. Is it eight eggs? Yeah. Go. Cool. Eight eggs for the tortilla. So, if you can see over here, the potatoes are starting to cook and they're going to break up a little bit, but that's okay. But you can see. The potatoes are starting to brown a little bit and get a little color. Just want to keep stirring it so they cook even because obviously the ones on the bottom are going to cook uh, faster than the ones on the top. But it's okay, don't stress if they break out because when you cook it in the eggs, you're not going to see that later. So I can tell they probably got about another, I don't know, five minutes, but they're getting really close. So I got a medium heat. I'm going to keep that covered. Let's finish this aioli real quick. So it's gonna, you're going to start to hear the noise in the blender change, and that's because the eggs have started to thicken. So I can start to add the oil a little bit faster. Now. So that's about a cup of oil. I wonder if you can see that, but it's nice and thick. And then this does have raw eggs in it, obviously. So you want to keep it in the fridge and keep it cold. And, um, you know, raw eggs can have uh, baby bacteria. So you just have to make sure you don't want to keep this for a long time and you want to make sure it stays full. Um, so I'm just going to add a little bit of lemon juice to there. How long can you keep it, do you think? I'd say probably three days would be good. All right. Yeah, so don't make too much. So I can really. It smells amazing right now. You can smell those onions starting to come alive. You can smell that potato starting to cook in there. Hopefully you're smelling the same thing at home. Anybody want me to look at their potatoes? That's got to make it all the way to North Carolina, Justin. It's going to take a little while for the smell to come across. <laughs> I'm gonna give this one more blend real quick to add that lemon juice in. So the other day, um, we've been cooking these at home. I cooked, uh, cooked one, show my daughter how to do it. The other day. And she saved all the potato um, peelings and we washed them up and then deep fried them and garnished them um, for our chili. So we call them, um, it's called in the restaurant potato nothings because uh, we're making something out of nothing that would normally get thrown away. Okay, so um, yeah, if you want to do that, uh, anytime you can change 
save your <laughs> potato peeling, wash them real good, and then fry them or bake them in the oven, and it makes a nice crunchy garnish for a soup or a salad or whatever you got. Is this thick enough? Okay, hold on. Let me uh, let me find your. Is that the Ollie? Yeah. All right. We can make that one bigger. That's small at one side. Um, that probably a little. You might want a little bit thicker. Just a little bit thicker. That looks good, though. That looks really good. But a little, a little more. More oil to get it thicker. More oil. Yeah, more oil is going to make it a little thicker. See that's that's pretty thick right there. Super garlic. You set that off the side. The other thing you're gonna need to have is a plate. Um so I'm gonna test my potatoes and they feel good. You just want a, a knife, butter knife to be able to cook through it nice and easily. So those are cooked. So we're going to take a bowl, we're going to strain this out, set that aside for a second. Now I got my bowl from earlier that had my oil and onions in it, and I'm just going to go ahead and crack eight eggs in there. Main thing you don't want is a shell in there. If you do get a little chunk of shell, it's good to take a little bit of the egg and pull it out with the eggshell. It seems to stick to it easier than a spoon. I feel like every time I try and get it out with a spoon, I end up chasing it around there. And I find it's good to crack it on a flat surface. Just give it two little locks there. Now we're just going to whip this up. Just like you're making an omelet. And then we're going to add about a tablespoon of salt. And it sounds like a lot of salt, but eggs and uh, potatoes absorb a lot of salt, so you're going to need it. And again, it's to feed that after this point. So we got that in there. And now I'm going to take my potatoes, which are hot, and I'm going to put those right into the eggs. And then this is going to start cooking the eggs. So it's actually going to start tempering the eggs. Um, so we're going to stir that around. And that's going to start to thicken in the bowl. See that tummy? Right? Yeah. So you can see I got a little bit of potatoes with some color on them. But I actually like that. I think that gives it a nice flavor. That's nice and hot. So that's actually cooking. I'm, I have all this oil left over here. So I got a lot of oil. So I'm going to pour some of that oil, hot oil in there. And that's going to make it nice and rich. That's going to cook in there with that olive oil and give it a really great texture. It's really going to be nice with the Chardonnay because it's kind of weight pairing. So uh, rich Chardonnay from the oak and the texture of that one is going to be really nice with this almond. So I'll turn my pan back on over here over high heat. I'm going to pour maybe almost enough oil to cover the bottom of the pan. And then once that gets hot, we're gonna slide this mixture inside there. You can see, I don't know if you can tell, but it's, it's starting to thicken already in here. Hey Justin, I missed it. Is it the same pan or a different pan? I'm using the same pan. Yeah. All right, cool, thanks. Same pan. 
The other thing you're going to need to have is a plate that's bigger than your pan. Because we're going to flip it over on this plate. Can you add uh, bell pepper or whatever at this point uh, also into it? Yeah, you can add, you know, if you want any flavorings. Um, if it's raw, you might want to cook your pepper. If you want to add hot sauce or anything like that, uh, that would be nice into the eggs too, if you like hot sauce in your eggs. So I got my pan nice and hot here. I got a lot of oil in there. And I'm going to go ahead and just pour this all back in there. And I'm going to shake my pan. Kind of like I'm sauteing something. And stir it. From the outside in. You can see it's starting to cook really fast. So once we break it up a little bit, we're going to let it start to cook and set up a crust. So I'm going to pat it down. You can see it's almost cooked right now already, just from being so hot. So I'm going to throw this on for probably about two minutes and let it brown. And again, right now we're going to be listening. We're going to be looking for it. Um, we're going to be smelling it. And then we're going to flip it out onto a plate, flip it over and cook the other side. So right now, it's a good time for a little sip of wine. Anybody have any questions? What temperature for the stove? For the stove top right now, it's uh, probably medium, medium high. Okay, yeah. cool. Hey, Justin, how often do you cook for the food and wine pairing? How often do I cook for it? Well, I mean, right now we're not currently offering it because uh, we're, the tasting room is technically closed. So what we're doing right now is we are delivering wine locally in Napa and Sonoma, and we are shipping wine. And people can come here and pick up wine and we right now are just offering a white wine cheese pairing, a red wine cheese pairing, and a charcuterie pairing that are available for pickup or delivery in Napa and Sonoma County. So that's on KJ.com, where you can also visit uh, your wine store, and they have some pretty good discounts as well. So I can tell it's starting to cook over here, and I can smell it. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to look underneath and see it's nice and golden brown. And then I am going to give it a flip. So this is kind of the, the tricky part. The first time you do it, you'll be a little concerned, but it's kind of one of those things you have to go for and you have to commit. You can see it's, it's not sticking to the bottom, which is good. It's a little bit loose, a little bit runny on top, which is good. So we're going to flip it over and then cook it on the other side. So I'm gonna put my hand on the bottom and just one quick flip. Beautiful. So we're gonna add a little bit more oil to the pan. Okay, so we did use a full cup of oil. Hopefully my cardiologist isn't watching, but you know, all oil is a heart healthy oil. So now we're just gonna slide this back in. I'm going to take my spatula and kind of push the sides back in and push it down a little bit. Yeah. We're going to go back on the heat for about two minutes and then we'll be done. How much, when you first put it on there, how much olive oil was there in the bottom of the pan, Justin? Sorry. Probably just enough to, so it's that same olive oil that you oh. drain from your you potatoes. Don't to, you don't need to add more? Sure. No, you don't need to add more. Cool. Um, so you need to uh, just probably enough to coat the bottom of the pan. Got it. Then we've got a new plate to pop it out onto. We got our aioli, we got our wine. Was that we a pre-made? Nice finishing salt too. That's a lot of times nice to give it a little crunch, a little texture. We use a salt from um, England, from Essex, England, 
called Malden sea salt. It's a really nice flaky salt or uh, so gris is a nice crunchy salt. Um, so that's a lot of things. A lot of times chefs will do that um, and you won't know what that pop is on your dish, but it's just a nice finishing salt. But this is, should be pretty good on salt today, unless you're looking for some crunch. We should be pretty close to where we need to be on the salt and oil level. So that's about how much oil we had left right there. Got it. Yeah. Maybe and how uh, two three tablespoons of oil. And Good I question, how long, on the first, how long on the first side, Justin? Sorry. How many minutes on the first side? Uh, the first side. Again, it's just going to depend on your heat, but that was probably, what, four minutes, I would say? Three, four minutes, maybe? So now I'm going to take this. Put right, it back you on there. You broke up, but sorry, how much? How long? Uh, uh, probably about uh, four minutes on the first Thank side. Thank you. Just where you can smell it, and if you take your spatula underneath it, yeah. you can see it golden brown. Got it. Thank you. Oh, yeah. So now we're going to go for a flip. That's it right there. So you can probably let it cool. I like to let it rest for about an hour. Um, and then if I have any leftover, I like to save it. You can put it in the fridge. I like to eat it cold the next day with a little um, hot sauce, a little sriracha. Uh, but you can you can serve it warm, nice with the salad. I, I normally wouldn't cut into this one. Actually, I'm cutting the top. So Tommy's was from about an hour and a half ago. And I'll just cut into this so you can see it. So that's nice. So it's actually still hot from that long ago. Um, you can see the potatoes in there. You can see the onions. You can see that the eggs are just barely set up in there. So that's a really good one. That, now, if we're in Spain, they might serve it a little bit looser, almost like runny omelet, like a French omelet. But, but that looks pretty good. I would be sick with that. So. And then we just give it a nice little garnish of garlic aioli or whatever sauce you prefer. I'm gonna do it. So yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it. Does anybody have any luck or any questions out there with the cook along? So I have my a question. I can't slow down. I can't do anything at once. Are you gonna be doing this again? Uh, this particular one? No, another cooking class. Thanks, though. Oh yeah. So next, uh, not this Wednesday, but the next Wednesday, Tracy is making orchidette pasta. Okay, orchidette pasta. And then I think the next one that I'm doing after that is going to be biscuits and gravy, which will be kind of a fun one. And again, it's kind of a technique driven one. Um, but we're open for suggestions. And uh, if we have the demand, we could definitely add some more in. Uh, we have an uh, amazing pastry chef, Buttercup, who could make some breads. He's been doing a lot of baking. We've also, all of our uh, sous chefs and myself have been shooting some videos at home, home cooking. So you'll probably start to see those on KK uh, social media over the next few weeks. Um, but yeah, I mean, as long as we have people who are interested in cooking along and drinking wine, we're happy to keep doing it until we get back to work. Please do arancini. Your arancini is always so good, and you always have different ones. We'd love to learn how to do arancini. Okay, yeah, that'd be a good one. Maybe we'll do a risotto, a risotto class, and uh, she asked for arancini, which is basically overcook your risotto, um, cool it, roll it into a ball, and stuff it with cheese, and then you uh, coat it in egg wash, flour egg wash, and breadcrumbs, and you deep fry it. It's this risotto with this really wonderful melty cheese and crispy outside. So yeah, that's a great one, great idea. Will Tonight, we get, we're... Will we get a uh, email notification of uh, all the classes? Yeah, if you're a wine club member, uh, you'll definitely get an email from Diane um, with the, uh, the code and we'll give you a recipe and a shopping list. I think we send those like a week out. Um, but yeah, check out kj.com and check out your wine store. Um, we have some great deals on there and you can buy not only Kendall Jackson right now, 
but a lot of the Jackson family wines um, with a nice discount and some shipping options mm -hmm. as well. And then if you're local in Napa or Sonoma, that's what you can have delivered um, to you. I forget what the range of miles is, but I know that folks have been delivering wine all over around the two counties. So. so mine stuck to the pan really bad. It did? Yeah. <laughs> Can you, what kind of pan do you have? It's a cast iron that I've been using oh, yeah, for quite a long time. It's a good is it cast well iron. Season? Yeah, it's very well seasoned. Yeah. And was it, it um, let's see. Um, can you see? Let's see. So excited. So, wow. That's good enough to eat. Uh, can you see it? I can't tell if you can see it or not. No, uh, no, I can't, I can't see it. I think I'm. Oh, I think I'm doing it wrong. Was it on an electric burner or a gas burner? It's a yeah. It's a um in, induction. Induction, yeah. Induction's a little tricky. Um, I would say it probably got too hot too fast on the okay. induction. Um, if I don't know if you have non-stick induction pan. Um, Maybe you could try that. You might be able to save it and cook the other side right now. Well, if that's what I'm doing. Another, Yeah, if you start another pan, uh, mm -hmm. lower heat, it. flip it out into that pan. That might work as well. Okay, here's mine. And um, I have an induction also, but I used a nonstick pan. Oh, nice. That looks perfect. Okay. Thank you. Was that your first one? We're having um, lemon parsley baked cod with it tonight. Nice. What's your address? <laughs> well, we're in Washington State, so. Okay, all right. I'll have to get it next time. That sounds delicious. So far, it looks like you're winning out there. <laughs> I think everybody should show their uh, tortillas in, the, in their frame for a shot. That'd be great. I'm happy with mine. So my thank you, Justin. Do yeah, we up. have a gas also, but I think our gas, was, I think we had it a little too high, but it's yeah. Like, yeah, for too long. It's looking a little dark. So that's my all, second half. Of it. Like black or like? Look at this. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty dark and <laughs> yeah, Cajun style. <laughs> kind of Cajun style. Yeah, we're, we're in California, but kind of Cajun style. <laughs> so I want yeah, to Get this you brown know, one of those things you can follow a recipe, but it's one of those things you just gotta it takes a couple times. The first one's hard, so right, don't be but discouraged. it's still yeah. The other side will be a little lighter. <laughs> yeah, it's, <laughs> and it's hard because everybody's flames different, and it's so hard to really. But again, just make sure you're you're listening and smelling a lot of it. Once you start to smell those onions, you'll know that it's it's. Uh, it's time to flip it. So it really doesn't take long once you put the eggs back in the pan. It's like two to three. Oh, that one looks really good. Nice work. Justin, just a comment. Um, when, yeah. I, when I went to print the, the recipe out, uh, at least using Thunderbird, uh, you get an overlay of that last comment. I can't remember what it is. Overlays into the middle of the recipe text. So you might want to okay. check the, uh, the printing options for the recipe. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll take a note on that one. Thank you. I appreciate that. What do you do with that? Thank you so much. What do you do on that? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That was so fun. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you. <laughs> so we serve the aioli on top of this. Cheers. Yeah, Cheers, Justin. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks, Justin. <laughs> If you, if you have a good picture of your, uh, of your tortilla, send it to Diane Bono and I'll, uh, okay. I'll have a look. Put it in the wine club and I'll, I'll compare the tortillas and we'll see, we'll see who the winner is today. So end of glass, end of class, I guess, huh? End of glass, end of... End of class, yeah, unless anybody has class. any other questions. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I'm happy to answer any questions. If you want, I can try and take the camera outside and we can walk out to the garden. I don't know if the Wi-Fi will keep up, but I'd love to show you the garden real quick. So why don't I, Tommy, sure. you want to grab that and we'll walk outside real quick? It might, 
okay. might uh, click off. So if it does, thank you so much, and we'll see you for uh, Orchietti or biscuits and gravy. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Thank Thanks so much, you. Justin. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. yeah. I like it. So I in the garden. I remember that. Oh, you walk right out of the kitchen into the garden here. Mm. Starting to move in, so it'll cool off pretty quick. That's because we're here in, in Fulton, which is considered the Russian River. Um, so, this is our vineyard where the Chardonnay I'm drinking today is from, uh, right over here. And uh, you can see they got the fans out there. Um, maybe they're expecting frost sometime a little more time. So we'll see. Hopefully not because I already planted my tomatoes. Uh, but the garden's looking spectacular. And Tucker just worked on this uh, new entrance here. They've been uh, putting a lot of new beds in. Put some new I'll have to go around the garden next time. Mm -hmm. You can see all the beautiful poppy flowers and the orange here on the front. We did walk around there, remember? Mm -hmm. we, remember the giant tree and big things. Even a lot of it. All, all of you that aren't muted, we're hearing you. Over here, this is a row of uh, mustard greens. So a lot of times we'll use these for garnish. It looks like mustard greens and bok choy. And baby uh, leeks in the next row. I don't know if you can see this, but this has netting on it. And then Tucker takes a pipe bender and bends these pipes. And he can create little greenhouses or put netting. We've had a lot of turkeys in here. We've had a lot of traffic and guests. We've had a lot more animals in the garden. So even in the daytime, the turkeys are trying, in here, trying to get in here and eat some stuff. So he's had to cover all of hmm. you can see Every time he flips a row, he puts uh, new compost down. And that helps put a lot of nutrients into our vegetables. That's why when you eat all the veggies, they taste so good. Let me show you a beehive over here. So this is a top bar hive, and this is a new a new bee swarm that we bought in. We bought the queen in, and you can see they're in here working really building up their hive. This is a free form hive, so there's not bars in it, so they just form it from the top. And what I did earlier is I put this simple syrup in here, 50% water, 50% sugar, to feed the bees. And I don't know if you can see it in there, but um, they haven't been eating too much of the syrup, I think, because there's so many flowers out here. Like, just right underneath the hive, there's verbena flowers there. So the bees, we like them because obviously we get honey, but they also help to pollinate all the flowers and veggies in the garden. So we have, uh, we have five full hives right now. And then we also have a commercial partner that stores his bees here. So he has a business where he'll bring bees to different farms or orchards to help pollinate and when he's not using them, not renting them out, basically, he parks them here in the back of the property. So there's a lot of bees on property, a ton of flowers and vegetables for the bees to pollinate and make honey, basically. Uh, walk this way, we can go see our chickens. Yeah.
is what we call French sorrel, unless you're in France and then it's probably just sorrel, but um, really great sour grass flavor. Most people know it from uh, salmon and sorrel sauce, which was a popular popular dish probably in the 70s and the 80s. Um, but the thing about it, when you cook it, it changes colors. It loses this bright green and gets a really ugly color. So A really nice, a uh, lot of cold bear with Sauvignon Blanc. It tastes sour. Here we have uh, lemon balm. This outside is all kinds of flowers. And this is to attract beneficial insects and pollinators. So basically, on the outside of the garden, we have all these beautiful things that bring good bugs in to help us keep down on the bad bugs, which makes it less good. This is one of my favorite spring things, fresh fava beans. And when they're this size right here, they're still nice and tender. We like to grill them, grill them, whole shell and all, and then you can eat the whole shell. Come in nice, soft, and uh, good olive oil. It's one of my favorite things in spring. Copier. They put the drip lines down. They'll probably put a little bit more soil on top of the drip lines and then plant that. Over here, we have those steaming kettles. They're popular in the chef world. Uh, fresh cilantro here, and uh, it's, it's, we're not really harvesting. this probably for about four or five years now but the first year tucker grew it nobody else had it so we were selling this this little leaf for a dollar a leaf i think in january it was probably 50 cents but when you eat it it tastes just like an oyster it's crazy it's if you come here you gotta taste this one it's really good right now One of my favorite things to do when we have guests from other countries that don't speak English um, is just to hand them a little of this leaf and just watch the expression on their face. And, and they just kind of light up and, you know, talk about how it tastes like a oyster because it, it's crazy how much it tastes like an oyster. Oyster, I think. You can see another high. 
really active. The bees are coming out and uh, let's see what they can do. Mm -hmm. coming out and getting pollen. And one one interesting thing I learned about the bees is when they go out. Um, Who's going to catch the chickens? Out, It's a fairly random sort of cat. You can tell by the plant. So they kind of pick up one flower for the day and they all go to that flower and they just come back. So this is another new hive. We have one hive that's been here since 2017. We're swarming. I muted this. Why? We'll have the we'll feed them sugar water for about a week. Well, they're building up their um, their hive, their combs, and then after that, we'll take it away and they'll just um, get water and get what they need from all the plants in the garden. I don't know if you can see it out here, but that's asparagus. Uh, and normally we'd be picking it, but the gleaners came out, and after a few days when it's hot like this, it starts to. So this is where we start a lot of our plants and we also grow a lot of microgreens here. Uh, everything kind of gets started on the table and then we do have an indoor greenhouse too. When it's uh, pulled out, we, uh, we start stuff in the greenhouse as well. A lot of cactus, we use the leaves when they get Take a knife, cut all the little pokers off, and then you can pickle it, you can cure it, you can grill a little bit of slimy flavor like okra. Whatever. Uh, what's it called? I don't know. There's probably not any on here right now. Um, but these are finger limes. And they're from Australia originally. And it's a citrus. This one's kind of dried up. But they, they look like that, and you cut them open. And then it looks like uh, caviar. And when you eat it, it's got this pop to it. And it tastes like it's really good. One of my favorite things to put on oysters, we'll put a little uh, of the citrus caviar or finger, finger lime or something. So, I forgot to order them the other day, but yeah, you can see Tucker, uh, these are Tucker's babies, and uh, they're excited to see us because everybody's been social distancing from them, so I think they've been a little bored out here, because normally people come on garden tours every day and feed them, feed them lots of uh, little green veggies. This one's uh, lemon verbena. One of my favorites for uh, citrus. Um, kind of smells like a lemon head. A lot of times it's used in tea, uh, dried and used in tea. The best way I've had it, actually, we had uh, we had some guest chefs and one of the chefs took a really big leaf and tempered it and deep fried it. And then you just ate it in this, this amazing citrusy crunch. Because you can't really eat it like this. It's really fibrous. 
So you gotta cook it somehow. So a lot of times we'll infuse it into a cream or into a sugar or a syrup or oil. We got some beets here. Beets. See that? That's a great salad right there. Just waiting for waiting for the gleaners to come get some salad. Dandelion greens. Looks like he's got some peas going over here. And then here he's got these um, for different reasons. It could be for frost protection, but hopefully no more frost. Uh, but it could also be to keep out a bug. So because it's an organic garden, uh, they have these little these little flea beetle things that um, they have a really hard shell on them. So the organic soaps that we spray on things don't really work on them. So what Tucker does is the moment he plants something, he'll go ahead and cover it. So uh, the turnips, a lot of times they like to eat the turnip leaves. Uh, we got potatoes over there. Uh, so he'll cover that. And then the only time they'll take the cover off is when they need to harvest the vegetable. So uh, that a lot less work. And, uh, the other thing he does, a lot of times he doesn't plant two of the same things side by side. He does a lot of crop movement. And most of the time we're not growing really big vegetables, we're growing kind of small center of the plate vegetables for fine dining. So he can flip these rows a lot faster. Um, all this beautiful lettuce. My, one of my favorite things about my job is one, the wine. Uh, two is the salad here. Every, Almost every day I try to eat a salad from Tucker because he'll take like the 50 best things that he has, flour, sugar, and Over here, just going to grow some hops. So this is going to be a hops TV. So let the hops run up here. And if you watch, if you Google hops greens, you can see in the video of the hops greens. Watch it in slow motion. Cheers. Thank y'all for your time. Have a wonderful day and enjoy that tortilla. We'll see you next time.